What is going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak with the Smallmouth Experience and if you like chasing smallmouth bass, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is a 100% smallmouth focused channel talking about tips, trips, all across the state of Michigan, all across the country chasing big smallmouth. So if you like smallmouth fishing, hit subscribe down below because it'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one here. Now this video is the first video in a buyer's guide series. There's been a lot of requests coming in for me to make a buyer's guide series with the baits that I'm throwing, the rod, reel, tackle that I'm using, and the boat equipment that I'm using that I trust to put me on big smallmouth bass. Every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, twice a week, I'm gonna be releasing a new video on my buyer's guide series all winter long. So it's gonna help you guys prep for next season with smallmouth baits, smallmouth gear that you can go out and use to catch big smallmouth. But we're gonna start super basic. So if you're a brand new smallmouth fisherman or someone that's just getting into chasing smallmouth bass, what are the tried and true baits that you need? What are the baits that you can basically pick up regardless of where you live and go out and catch big smallmouth with? And that's what this video is gonna be focused on are the basic baits, the basic tackle, the basic gear that you need to go out and chase big smallmouth bass. Now the first lure we're gonna talk about, the one that I have the most fun throwing to catch big smallmouth is a medium diving crankbait. We're talking a crankbait that dives from like eight to 12 foot of water. Most all year long, you can throw an eight to 12 foot diving crankbait and get smallmouth to bite. Whether it's pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post -spawn, summer, doesn't matter what time of year, you're gonna have a class of fish, a class of big fish that will stay relatively shallow that you can catch on a medium diving crankbait. Now, obviously if you're fishing really shallow rivers or fishing from the bank, you might need to downsize this. You might not want to throw an eight to 10 foot diver. You might want to throw like a four to six. Um, and if you're fishing ultra deep bodies of water, um, these will still probably work, but you can kind of increase the depth of your crankbaits as well based on the areas of the water that you're fishing. But my go-to is like a DT10 style crankbait, like an eight to 12 foot diving crankbait. Now, as I just mentioned, the DT-10, that is one of my favorite crankbaits to go out and chase big smallmouth with. It's a bait that has a really tight action, it's a very unique bait, and it dives to 10 feet. That's why it's the DT-10. So you can get this bait to dive, you know, eight foot deep, six foot deep. You can fish it shallower on heavier line, or you can fish it all the way down to about 12 foot of water if you go lighter line to like eight pound test. But it dives to 10 feet of water, which is really a key depth for smallmouth bass. And when you're choosing crankbait colors, which I'll have a video on this coming out soon, you wanna choose colors based on the clarity of the water you're fishing and the forage type. Um, if I'm fishing cleaner water, I'm gonna go with color like this. I believe this is either Disco Shad or Helsinki Shad in the Ike DT series. Um, but it's basically a white sided bait, a translucent green back here, or like a, I don't know, it's like a soft green back. And it really imitates a variety of bait fish really, really well. So cleaner water, I'm going with a whiter bait or clearer bait, and uh, that's what I'm trusting to put big fish in the boat. But as the water gets dirtier, if they're keying in on perch or bluegill really good, I'm gonna go to a bait like this that has more of a chartreuse base, um, something with a little bit brighter colors because they'll be able to key in on it a little bit better in that dirtier water. Um, so something like this, I don't know if it's a parrot color, but it's uh, chartreuse sides, blue back. I really like this color anytime they're keying in on, on perch or bait fish in dirtier water situations. So these are my favorite color DT10 series baits. The other really good one is called the Demon Color. In earlier season when they're keying in on crawfish, it's a bright red crankbait. It looks like a crawfish. I really like that color um, as well. But I'm going to have all these linked down in the description below so you guys can go check them out. But they're also baits that you can typically find at your local tackle shops. Um, so you don't have to buy them offline if you don't want to. The other crankbait I want to recommend is the Strike King 3XD. Now this is a bait that's caught a bunch of fish for me. Um, actually in this color it's caught me a bunch of fish. But it's a smaller body crankbait that dives to about 12 feet of water. So it's a very small bait and if you put it next to the DT10, the body size, even the bill size is a lot smaller. So it's more conducive for smallmouth which have really small mouths obviously. But it also catches really big fish. Um, this is a really good color, Black Magic. It's made by Strike King, obviously, but it's a black bait, blue little accents on the side, and chartreuse on the belly of that bait. This is really good, actually, in cleaner water as well as really dirty water. And the reason for that, I think, is because a lot of people aren't throwing this color, um, but it's a good color. Again, same kind of methodology for choosing crankbait colors. Cleaner water, you want to go with lighter colors, more translucent colors, see-through colors, and 
as the water gets dirtier is when you're going to go to those more chartreuses, you know, chartreuse bluebacks, chartreuse blackbacks. Um, so kind of use that when you're choosing crankbait colors. But the Rapala DT10, Strike King 3XD are my go-tos when I'm crankbaiting for smallmouth bass. Now, another bait that I've had a ton of success on for catching big smallmouth is a jerk bait. Now, a jerk bait is one of the most iconic smallmouth lures probably ever. Um, and a lot of times when people talk about jerk bait fishing, they think about smallmouth. And this bait here is a great bait if you want to throw a jerk bait on a spinning rod. This is the Rapala Shadow Wrap Deep. So, as you can tell, it's got a little bit longer, more coffin style bill. It's a light bait, there's not really a weight transfer system but it's a good bait to throw on a, on a spinning rod. It's kind of harder to throw on a bait caster, but if you put it on a spinning rod, it works awesome. Catches a lot of giant fish. My buddy Brant Shredders actually caught a 7-2 on almost this exact bait. Um, but this is one of my favorite colors. I really like when I'm smallmouth fishing to fish a bait that looks like the color of the smallmouth. This is a tip I picked up on Major League Fishing. Kevin Van Dam won an event in Northern Michigan throwing an IU colored style jerk bait which is basically like a chartreuse or a olive back with a translucent side and a little bit of chartreuse on the belly. It looks just like the smallmouth, but they key in on, on that because that's kind of what the bait fish look like too, emerald shiners, perch. So this is a really good color in the shadow wrap deep. I believe this is a haymaker color. I'll list a couple other colors in the description for you guys, but the haymaker color, um, and there's a couple other shad or minnow style colors that I really like as well. And another shallower diving option that you can throw on a, on a bait casting setup a little bit more easily is the Six Sense Provoke 106X. This is a bait I've had a ton of success on um, and caught a bunch of big fish in northern Michigan. And this is the Pro Blue color. Pro Blue, if you look at jerk baits all across the country, is probably one of the top sellers. And the reason for that is it's super natural. It looks like a bunch of different types of minnows. And so it just gets bit. Smallmouth and largemouth key in on it. So a pro blue color jerk bait is a great option when you're going out to try and chase big bass. Now the 106X, I said, is going to dive a little bit shallower. If you throw it on, you know, 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon line, it's going to dive down to about three or four feet. It's a good option when those fish are starting to push shallow, when they're keying in on bait fish and they want to come up and eat something. That 106X is a great choice for that. Another really iconic smallmouth bait is a spinner bait. A spinner bait is something that I kind of moved away from, caught some fish on it this year, but this is the Booyah spinner bait. Now we've included these in the Monster Bass box, I believe once or twice, um, but the reason for that is because they catch a lot of really big fish. And a spinner bait, although it's kind of been replaced by other baits on the market, swim baits and chatter baits, catches big bass, catches big smallmouth, and there's two colors that I really like. One is this pearl white. It's just all white with, um, uh, gold blade and a silver blade. I like that mixed blade combination because it really puts off a, a lot of flash and vibration uh, regardless of what the water clarity is. And the other one is chartreuse and white. And chartreuse and white, chartreuse just by itself is an amazing smallmouth color. They see the color chartreuse, they want to kill it. So chartreuse and white is a great selection. I um, mean, I really like this chartreuse and white when they're keyed in really shallow. Like when I'm throwing this bait and I'm kind of buzzing it just below the surface, I like chartreuse and white. If I'm getting it down a little bit deeper, I like that all white bait. I just think when that chartreuse is right at the top of the water column, those fish don't get as good of a look at it, but it kind of silhouettes a little bit better so they can come up and smash it. So that's what I'm gonna choose, that chartreuse and white. Or if I'm fishing around reeds or really shallow cover, I'll go with chartreuse and white. Now, those are the hard baits that I'm gonna talk about. The rest are pretty much soft baits and terminal tackle, um, but this is really where I do a lot of my damage after the spring. So once the spring is over, I'm going to put down some of those hard baits. They're going to key in on a little bit softer baits, basically until fall and they get really aggressive again. And this is where I do a lot of my damages in the soft bait category. And the first one is a swim bait. Like I said, a swim bait sort of replaced a, a spinner bait for a while, and the reason for that is it's a little bit more subtle. Uh, action than a spinner bait doesn't have as much flash doesn't have as much uh, vibration coming through the water but smallmouth can still key in on it and smash it and so when they may be coming up and like slapping at a spinner bait or not getting it take a little swim bait like a kai tech uh, swing impact fat or a strike king rage swimmer great options to go and chase big fish now this is a kai tech swing impact fat in the tennessee shag color 
Tennessee Shad, Electric Shad, and IU are my favorite colors in swim baits like this. Um, basically, they look really natural. It's kind of got a grayish back with a smoke belly, um, or you have a greenish back with a smoke belly, and those really imitate the bait fish that those fish are keying in on really well. So, Strike King Rage Swimmer or a Kitex Swing Impact Fat are my go-tos for little 3.8, three and a half inch swim baits. Now I'm choosing a little bit smaller style swim baits. I'm not choosing like the 4.8 or five inch styles. Um, that 3.8 or three and a half inch swim bait really looks like a lot of the bait fish. And I think that smaller profile, it's not small, but that smaller profile helps those smallmouth get it in their mouth, eat it and, and chew it a lot better. And the swim bait head that I'm gonna pair with that is the VMC swim bait head. Um, it's not anything too crazy special, but I like the quarter ounce or the three eighths ounce size. The quarter ounce, if I'm fishing basically down to 10 feet of water, if I'm going deeper than 10 feet, I'll go up to that three eighths ounce size. But the VMC swim bait head is a really good jig head for these swim baits. It's got a really good bait keeper that keeps these baits pinned on there. So you don't go through a ton. Another really good tip for you guys that don't want to go through a ton of swim baits, take some super glue, dab it on the head of that, that swim bait jig and it'll, help that bait stay on that hook a little bit longer, get you a little bit more action out of, or life out of that swim bait than you might typically get. The next is probably the catchingest smallmouth bait ever. It's a bait that's been used for years and years and years um, all across the country to catch big fish. Kind of been overlooked in recent years, replaced by a Ned rig, and that is a tube. Now a tube will catch smallmouth if you're fishing rivers, if you're fishing the Great Lakes, if you're fishing inland bodies of water, a tube will flat out catch giant smallmouth bass. And this is the Strike King coffee scented tube. Now when you're choosing tube colors, keep it really simple. You don't have to go crazy and buy 30 different tube colors. I basically keep two or three in the boat. The first one is this Gobi Magic color. Now Magic Gobi by Strike King Coffee Tubes is basically a deep green pumpkin, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of orange flake. And I really like that color because it can imitate a bunch of different forage. It can imitate a perch, it can imitate a goby, it can imitate a crawfish even when those crawfish are molting. So Magic Gobi is color number one. Second color is KVD Kick. Now this I'll fish when that water's a little bit cleaner. So when you're fishing around a little bit cleaner bodies of water, where visibility is, is what you would consider pretty good. Like if you're fishing a body of water where you have four to eight foot of visibility, I really like the KVD kick. Or if they're keying in on perch really heavy, like if their main forage is perch, I'll go to KVD kick. It's more of a cucumber with some silver and gold flake. Imitates those perch darting around, catches giants. So that's color number two. And the third color is smoke purple. Now smoke purple is one of the Premier colors on ultra clear bodies of water. Traverse City, Northern Michigan, you're fishing a smoke purple tube. Um, really, really neutral, um, non-intrusive colors. Blends into the bottom well, just like the gobies, just like all the bait fish. So Magic Gobi, KVD Kick, or if you're up in Northern Michigan where water clarity is like insane, 15 plus feet, that smoke purple is a great color. Now we're going to talk about the tube head that I'm putting in there. And I'm not necessarily going to recommend a brand of a tube head. I like the Bite Me jig heads. But what you're looking for is a jig head that has a tapered style tube head like that. Now this is going to be your best all around style tube head. Um, it goes in the tube well, causes the tube to have a spiraling action on the fall, and will dart around when you kind of kick it up off the bottom. So that's what you're looking for in a tube jig. I'll leave a couple links down in the description for you guys to check out, but I would choose uh, a quarter or three sixteenths of an ounce. Um, that's a light enough size. You can throw it on a spinning rod with ease. You can fish it relatively deep. Um, and really that three sixteenths or a quarter ounce is going to be a really good go-to size for your tube jig head. The next bait we wanna move into or I wanna move into is a drop shot bait. And this is something I've developed a bunch of confidence in this past year is fishing this specific bait. And it is the Berkley Max Scent Flatworm. You can get this at Walmart, you can get it at Deca Warehouse, Bass Pro, anywhere that you're shopping for soft plastic baits or, or bass fishing tackle, you can pretty much find this bait now. It's the Berkley Power Bait Max Scent Flatworm. It's a small profile bait can use it to look like bait fish, looks like gobies, can use it to look like a bunch of different forage types, and 
just flat out catches fish on a drop shot. The way I'm going to rig this on my drop shot hook is I'm just going to nose hook it. So I'm just going to go in the bottom of the bait, out the nose of the bait, just like that. It's going to stand out straight off the hook. It's going to dance around, bounce around, and those fish are going to eat it. Um, and that Berkeley Max Scent flatworm catches giants. My all-time favorite color is the Gobi or the Mango Magic. They're very, very, very similar colors, so if you can only find one or the other, Gobi or Mango Magic is a great color. The hook that I like to use is a VMC Nico hook. The VMC Nico hook size 2. So that size 2 is a really good all-around size, regardless of what style drop shot bait you're using. So the VMC Nico hook size 2 is the drop shot hook that I'm going with. In drop shot weight, um, I like these teardrop style weights like this. This is lead. Um, 3 sixteenths or 1 quarter ounce is what I'm using most all the time. You can go up if you're fishing deeper or if it's really wavy, but a quarter ounce is what I fish pretty much all the way down to about 15 or 20 feet of water. So a quarter ounce is what I would recommend in a teardrop style drop shot weight. And this is the quick drops. You get it on Tackle Warehouse. Um, a bunch of people pour drop shot baits or weights just like that one as well. Now a bait that has kind of taken the industry by storm over the past couple of years is a Ned Rig. Now this is the Z-Man TRD Ticklers. There's a bunch of variations on Ned Rig style baits, but what I like about this bait are actually these little tails or appendages off of the back of the bait. It has four appendages, they kick around, they move a little bit of water. That gives me a lot of confidence, especially when I'm fishing a Ned Rig. Yes, a lot of people will throw baits that don't have any action and that catches a lot of fish, but for me, I like to know that it's doing something down there, so the TRD Ticklers is a great option. The Finesse TRD, the TRD Hogs, there's a ton of different uh, Ned Rig style baits. Go with what you have confidence in. Basically anything with a small profile that can do virtually nothing or very little on the bottom is going to get a lot of bites. It's a small profile that's meant to be fished close to the bottom or just off the bottom on a lightweight. It's going to catch a lot of big fish. And the head that I'll go with is the Z-Man 1 5th ounce TRD shrooms head. So the 1 5th ounce uh, is a relatively small size. I know they make lighter sizes, but I feel like with that 1 5th ounce, you're going to have feel all the way to the bottom. You're going to be able to actually stay in contact with the bottom uh, with that size weight, but it's not going to bury into a bunch of rocks and crevices. So you're fishing, you know, rivers or shallow ponds or whatever. You can still get away with throwing that 1 5th ounce head, uh, and you're not going to have it bury up on you, and you're not going to break off a bunch of baits. So those are all the baits that I would recommend if you're a beginner smallmouth angler. So for rods and reels, you can keep it really simple. Uh, six and a half foot to seven foot medium power spinning rod is a great spinning rod for virtually all of these techniques. You can throw your jerk bait on it. You can throw your three XDs on it. You can throw pretty much all of these baits on a spinning rod. Um, and if you're more confident with the bait caster, um, I would recommend like a seven foot uh, medium heavy bait casting setup. That's going to handle your crankbaits, it's going to handle your swim baits, your spinner baits, your tubes. Um, you can do a bunch of different techniques with that 7 foot medium heavy. The line that I'm recommending on a spinning reel is braid to fluorocarbon leader. This is Power Pro 15 pound test braid to a fluorocarbon leader 8 pound test fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon for smallmouth, especially in clear bodies of water situations, is extremely important. Smallmouth are visual feeders, so if you're fishing uh, fluorocarbon line, it's gonna be virtually invisible to those fish, so they're gonna be able to key in on your bait rather than key in on the fact that there's a long piece of string running to your bait down there on the bottom. So I like to fish fluorocarbon to my bait. Now, I fish a long leader on that, but eight pound fluorocarbon as my leader on spinning setups, and I'm typically fishing like 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon on most of my equipment for my bait casting setups. So I know we covered a lot of information in this. All of these products are gonna be linked down in the description below. Um, but if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below because there's gonna be a ton of things that I'm gonna be talking about kind of expanding on some of this in future videos. Remember again, every Tuesday, Thursday, I'm gonna have buyer's guide videos coming out for you guys. And if you guys wanna see my list of videos that I have planned, um, I have them listed on my Patreon. Now they are under one of my paid tiers. Go over, check out my Patreon. It's something I just launched brand new for the Smallmouth Experience channel. Um, and you guys can support the channel that way. It's gonna allow me to interact with you guys in a little bit different fashion, create polls for you guys. We can bounce video ideas off of each other. But Patreon is a great way, if you guys wanna support the, the channel in a financial manner, it's a great way that you guys can do that. 
Um, I just really appreciate all of you watching this video. If you like smallmouth fishing, if you enjoyed this video, learned something, please hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, Ted Lions. God bless. Pursue passion.